Welcome back. So this is day three of the roller workouts and day five of our virtual track camp. And we are pleased to uh, have made it through, I think, a, a very good week. We've enjoyed having all the attendees on and seeing who's been logging in. And it's been uh, a great opportunity for the athletes to uh, be a part of the, this this uh, this week with everyone. And, and um, and uh, we've really enjoyed the opportunity. We, we've been able to reach uh, some additional uh, folks that we wouldn't have otherwise when we do our in-person camps. And, uh, um, and that's been a, a real, real uh, blessing and opportunity. So, so thanks for, for joining us. So today we have, uh, we're, we're honored to have Daniel Romanchuk as our featured athlete here in the roller room. And uh, Daniel needs no introduction, but I'll give a, a brief one. And that is, uh, a, uh, he's had a very successful last few years and uh, won Boston Marathon, Chicago, New York City Marathon, London Marathon. Uh, hopefully I got them all. And uh, had outstanding efforts on the track, including uh, multiple world records, including uh, he's the only person to ever break 90 seconds and then 800 meters on the track. So, um, so Daniel's Incredibly accomplished, uh, diligent, hard worker, and a, and a great, great athlete, great human being. So, Dan, you can go ahead and get rolling here. Uh, as we start warming up, I'll talk you through the workouts. So we're just going to do a progressively increasing workout uh, warm up, excuse me, as we have been doing. Today is going to be a little bit different uh, of a uh, strategy. We're going to go. We're going to do a two-three-three-two. Um, progressively increasing warm up. Two minutes at sixty percent RP. Three minutes at seventy percent RP. Three minutes at eighty percent RP, and then two minutes at ninety percent RP. And again, RP is rate of perceived exertion, and that's your personal sense of effort level. And um, for Daniel, um, he's going to gradually increase and dial up that RP. And there's a few different ways you can. Uh, track and assess and identify your RP. We just use a percentage of 100, and uh, uh, and that's just uh, what we've done. That's just what we've used in our system. So um, you'll you'll find out what works for you. Zero to 10, zero to 20. Um, we've just fallen to, on uh, a percentage of 100 percent. And so first two minutes is going to be pretty doggone easy. Just kind of opening up those shoulders, shaking off the cobwebs. Danny already had a nice hard workout this morning. So he's going to shake off the, the dust from, from that workout. And uh, we'll get ready to launch into this, one, this session. So once we finish the warm up, um, take a minute easy. We're going to do some nice accelerations. We have a little different format today. And that is we're going to do some standing start accelerations. We've uh, previously done rolling accelerations on Monday and Wednesday. Um, so we're going to do a two by 10 stroke with 30 seconds rest. We're going to do a two by 20 stroke. And those are both standing start, rest 30 seconds. Mini easy jog. Then we're going we're gonna to hit that post warm up max speed so we can calculate our percentages for the remainder of the workout. And it looks like we've got about 10 seconds. And then Daniel's going to move up to about 70% RP. We're going to hold that for three minutes. Uh, back to the workout. So once we get our max speed, we'll calculate those percentages. And today we just need 75% of your, your max speed and 80% of your max speed. Um, but uh, we're going to do uh, some two-minute block efforts today with some, some good speed variation. So we're going to do these uh, as a 15-second sprint. And then we're going to settle back into 45 seconds where we pull that speed back into 75% range. That's about an 80% RP. And then we're going to hit another 15 second sprint. Pull that back for just 30 seconds, but that speed is going to be a little bit quicker than our 45 second effort. We're going to be at 80% of our uh, max speed or up at 90% RP. So pretty, pretty solid clip. Uh, and then we're going to finish with a nice hard 15 second sprint. So you can see we have th three 15 second sprints with a 45 second steady block and a 30 second steady block interjected in there. Um, each of those will be balanced out with a two, set, a two minute easy jog recovery. Um, once we get five of those in, then we're gonna finish with a nice little 
uh, a four by 10 second sprint, 20 seconds easy effort. So, uh, so that'll go by pretty quick. And then we'll just, we'll get a three minute cool down in and be ready to, to wrap it up for today. So um, let's see, we have about 90 seconds before we pull it up into the 80% RP. Please send your questions as you have those and we'll jump in and, and answer those during uh, during the workout. So we, we, uh, we've had so many great questions this week and, and uh, which has been, uh, you know, one of the, one of the concerns I had going online was that we just would lose some of the ability to have that uh, 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 coordinated dialogue and interaction. But I think uh, I think the attendees have had some really great questions. You guys have had great questions, so keep those coming. Keep those coming. Um, so today, uh, let's see, about 50 seconds, and we'll move into our 80% RP. So today. We're going to settle in on that two minute block. And I talked a little bit about that on Wednesday or Monday. I don't remember which day, maybe both. Um, this is a good, uh, this two minute uh, 800 meter block is a really good interval set, I think, to work on a lot of different things. I think you can accomplish a lot in that, that time frame, And uh, you can work up and down and, and in terms of targeting some, some uh, variables that are important to be successful in longer distances and shorter distances. So that two minute block is very good. We're throwing in the variable of standing start today too. And I didn't mention, we're gonna do some of those two minute blocks from the standing start. Um, and that just adds another element too. Um, all of which need to be trained to be successful on the track uh, and on the road, but, but uh, especially if you, so if, if you're talking about standing start on the track. So now we're up at our 80% effort level. Uh, you can see Daniel's increasing that cadence. You can potentially you can hear the the the, hand, the glove striking the hand ring, meaning he's applying a little more force and uh, moving that intensity up a little bit more. Should have a good sweat rolling and uh, and uh, tuning in and and uh, creating a positive intention for the rest of the workout. So um, so Daniel's at 80% RP at the moment, as you are too. And then we'll finish, we'll cap it with a really nice solid 90% RP, which you should be, that, that really should uh, grab your attention and, and tune you into the, the workout. Um, so with our, our session today, we're working on some speed variation. We're working on some speed with serve, uh, the ability to, to to achieve a, a high percentage of your max speed at the end of the race when you're carrying a little fatigue in your arms. Um, and we're also working on rolling acceleration. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that we're gonna target today. Um, and all that can be accomplished in, in, in a short two minute block. Well, short, I guess, depends on if you're, if you're doing the interval or not, because they can seem kind of long once you get into them and you're, you're, uh, you're really pulling in and, and uh, having to push through some of the, that discomfort. Um, okay, so we have about a minute left, if my math is right, and I think it is, before we jump up into our last two minute block at 90%. Um, so let's see, a few things we can look at with Daniel with his stroke and his technique, you can see um, one of the things that really, that really jumps out on the roller, because we're in a, a little higher speed environment. Uh, not, there's, there's a, a touch of load on the roller, uh, but he's still able to, to get a nice degree of hand separation. So you can see that separation prior to accelerating back into the ring for contact. Um, he's moving his hands a little bit quickly, so it's, it's hard to see what that hand's doing, but um, if you just focus in on that thumb, you can see how it's driving down towards the ground and then rotating away. Um, we got about 20 seconds, Daniel, and then we're going to move into your uh, two minutes at 90% RP. Yep. 10 seconds, 10 more, and here we go. We're going in three, two, one, and then we're going to dial it up a little bit, up to 90%. You can notice, I don't know if you can hear that, but you notice that increase it goes kind of a repetitive uh, 
of um, of cadence and then if you move that 90 second or we move up into that 90 percent rpe then you can really hear that increase in cadence as he, he uh, elevates his, his stroke per minute rate as i mentioned earlier too daniel tends to strike the ring and create a a, a nice acoustic effect so when he's down in the roller room you can tell when he's he's increasing that intensity level and um and that's okay um, if you're a little bit quieter versus a little bit louder i haven't noticed any real causal relationship between performance and the the sound of the, the glove striking the hand ring i have some athletes who are who are very quiet and their speeds elevate i have other athletes like daniel who has their speeds elevate and increase so too does the the noise level so um so find what works for for you and uh and whatever it is that will allow you to move that wheel more quickly so we're going up we got 30 more seconds at this effort level and you can see a nice block increase in that that intensity over that 10 this 10 minute block um and those those uh um, pathways of, of um, and whatever that means but this you should be you should be in a mood now to to uh move into these accelerations and train hard so 10 more seconds then we'll just ease off on the throttle a little bit for a minute and five seconds three two one all right great just shake it out a little bit if you need to drink water grab a drink of water if not that's okay too you guys got fans running. Daniel likes to have a fan, so we got a little more uh, noise in the background today. Hopefully, that's not an issue. Um, if it is, just type, let, let us know in your Q&A, and we'll, we'll uh, try to address that. But um, it's nice to have some air moving around and, and some water, too, to hydrate. So uh, 30 seconds, and once you get near the end of this rest, we'll come to a dead stop. And then we'll get positioned and ready to do our standing start accelerations. So we're doing two by 10 stroke, two by 20 stroke. And again, as those rolling accelerations, they don't have to be at 100%. We'll just work into it. So the first 10 stroker, it may just be at 80%. Next one will be a little bit harder and so on. Okay. So we got about three and two, one. So we're going to go whenever Daniel's ready. Yep, there he goes. So he's going to do 10 hard strokes. Won't take long. There it is. Very, very good. So we'll take about 30 seconds of rest. And when he's ready, he'll get repositioned and he'll do another hard 10 stroke standing start. Any questions yet there, Matty Ice? No. Not yet. All right, good. Oh, we do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the question is and whenever you're ready, Daniel. I'll let you run it here with these standing starts. And as he's going, the question is, when you're working on your, your technique, is it better to be on the rollers or outdoors? Um, I do really like to hone in on, on some of those opportunities we see in the technique on the rollers, because you just, you, you, um, you take out a lot of different variables so that you can really key in on some things. And, and then too, if you're doing some video analysis and video capture, it's a lot easier for your coach or your parent or whoever to get some different angles uh, on the roller. They can just work around and walk around and really, really key in on some of those pieces. So, so I do like being on the rollers um, to work on some of those things. But, but at the end of the day, you do need to get out in the field. You need to be outdoors apply those 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 technical changes and those changes technique across different environmental factors so now we're going into 20 strokes daniel should be back should be pretty close to race pace here nice very good very good that's 20 he's got one more and then we'll get a nice easy jog so um yeah so that that's it so i, I really do, as I said, I'll just I'll I'll rehash what I just said and say that that a um, 
the roller doffers a, a very good environment in which you can refine your technique and and we spend three plus months on the rollers um and, and that's because of of uh, living where we live with with the cold winters where we are forced indoors but irrespective of, of that i'll let him do his 20 strokes here Nice, great job. All right, Daniel. Take about a minute easy jog. And uh, if you need a little bit more, whenever you're ready for your max speed, Daniel, we'll, we'll hit that. Um, what was my point I was making? Um, only that we spend a block of time every winter on the rollers and, and because of the weather, but, but, but irrespective of the weather, we would spend that time because it just allows us to key in on some, some things and work on some opportunities that we just, uh, aren't as easily able to work on when we're outdoors? That's a really great question. Got some more for me? Oh my goodness, three questions, great. How do you calculate power on the rollers? Okay, we'll answer that one. How do I calculate power on the rollers? We don't, we let the, the, uh, the we have a Wahoo kicker unit attached to the roller and it, that, that system calculates watts for us. So I can't tell you that they are accurate. They may or may not be. Um, we haven't, we just don't use that as a data point to guide our training indoors. We, we use velocity, we use RP, we use heart rate for athletes to use that. Um, yep, so if the watts are showing, they may or may not be accurate. They may or may not be accurate. If it says 1200 watts, then it's accurate. I'm just kidding. So, all right, Daniel, whenever you're ready, go ahead and get your max speed, and then we'll go from there. Same for you guys at home. If you're ready, let's – so you can ease into it. And then once – you can see once Daniel gets that wheel moving, he's going to find a point where he's comfortable, and then he's just going to attack that ring. So now he's winding it up, winding it up. There he goes. You can see that. one miles an hour so that's great um, so I really like that I'll, I'll point out a couple things is what when he's getting up to his max speed he's not accelerating at 100% to get to a point he's just he's gradually dialing it up moving into that point where he feels like the wheels ready for that final attack that final gear and then he's going and you can see right you can see it was a real smooth um, uh, uh, application of force and then once he was ready to go, there was a distinct difference in, in, uh, in that attack. And you can see on the roller, he's, putting a, he's applying so much force, and he's getting so much lift in that recovery phase that, that he's bouncing off the roller and lifting the whole chair up. Um, if you do that in, in a productive and effective way, uh, generally that means you're going pretty fast. So, so that's kind of neat to see. So thanks for doing that, Daniel. That was great. We got that on camera. All right. So I don't have a recovery built into this, but we'll take a couple minutes. Just get yourself ready. If you need a drink of water, if you got water at home, stretch out a little bit, uh, whatever you need to do. And then we'll get our first uh, minute, two minute block. So um, Daniel, I think what we'll do is, is um, um, I'm going to set his 75% I'll probably a little bit lower than what he would do other, normally, but um, Let's just hold about, and you tell me what this sounds like if we did uh, 28 ish miles an hour for 75, and then for your 80, bring it up to low 30s, or do we want to go 26, 28? Uh, you can let I your. Can go, I, can, I think I can go up. Okay, all right. Let your RP guide you. Um, Daniel's one that we typically. Because he's got such a great max speed, typically I'll adjust down those those percentage of max velos for so for other people it may be 75%. I'll probably pull Daniel back down into that 70% zone um, so that we can pair it with the appropriate RP. Um, it's just because his max speed is so high uh, that pulls up everything else. So 
Um, so that's why when we have heart rate too, we can use that as a, as a, as a reference point. So, um, so that's why you have to, you know, you have to, I always qualify, you just have to adjust it. These are, these are guiding principles and you adjust for each athlete. So um, you think you're ready, Daniel, to roll? Okay, great, great, great. So we're gonna do, we're gonna alternate. First one's gonna be standing. So he's gonna do a standing start um, and probably he can just, we'll go in, we'll say 20 seconds to start on 19 minutes on our clock. So it's gonna be 15 seconds at 100%. Dial it back down for 45 seconds at 75%, 80% RP. Another hard 15 second jump, 30 seconds back at 80 or 90% RP, and then a 15 second jump to finish. So he's gone in three, two, one standing and gone 15 seconds. Nice, five seconds left. Good, good, easing off. So he's just gonna coast down to that speed. And then once he sees that target speed, then he's gonna get back on the ring. And this too, it teaches you a level of efficiency. It teaches you a feel of the hand ring and being able to manipulate your force application so you can achieve those speeds and be efficient and economical. That's really great, really great. So he's got 20 seconds left and we're gonna grab this next 15 second jump. In 10 seconds, looking good. Then we're gonna we're gonna hit it. So you can visualize either that he's he's making a little attack or maybe he's responding to an attack in a race. And he's going and here he's going as quickly as you can. He's gonna jump back up. Very nice, very nice. Good, good, good. Great, that's 15. Now just a short block, 30 seconds. Ease back in, ease back in, very good. And he's prepping for this final kick. He's got about 15 seconds here. Then we're gonna jump back into this final kick. Maybe the last 120 in a race. Maybe he's off the front, responding to an attack. He's gonna go in three. Two, one, and here we go. Nice little, last little kick. Last little surge here to the finish line. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Great, that was a really nice effort. So we're gonna go at 23, two minutes remaining. Um, next one we're gonna do as a roll. So we're gonna alternate. We're gonna do a standing start, then we're gonna do a rolling, uh, rolling effort. Um, so one of the things that we'd like to do when we break these, these two minute efforts up, and we'll do it on the track too, is we try to model it based on different race scenarios. And that's what you can do on the rollers is visualize. So you think about from a standing start, you're gonna hit that first 120 through the break line in 15 seconds, and then you're gonna pull it back in, right? So let's say Daniel's this establishing position, either up front or in the pack. Uh, in the 800, he wants to be up front. Um, but let's say we're working on a 1500. Maybe he just wants to target, jump up off the front. Then he's going to ease back in. Maybe then make a little nice attack, try to spread it out. Or maybe somebody else attacks and he's going to counter it, um, pull back, and then set himself up so he can slingshot. Or if he's off the front, he wants to attack to that finish line. So, um, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to translate the the training that we're we're undergoing into. Uh, race specific ability level. Uh, what do we got? 40 seconds left, right? Yep. So next one's gonna be a rolling. Next one's gonna be a rolling. Same concept though. We're going 15, 45, 15, 30, 15. And then I'll answer another question next on the next rest. 20 seconds. So this one, you're going to be rolling off a, you know, it doesn't have to be super slow, but, you know, modest, a modest pace. We're working on a, a slower rolling acceleration on rolling acceleration off a slower velocity. Uh, we're going in three, two, one, and hit it. Yep, 15 seconds. Very good. Nice, 
Nice. Great. Great. Three, two, one. All right. Easing off back into that 75% range. Finds that speed he wants, and then he's just gonna move in that. And this is a skill, as I said, the first effort. This is a skill too, to be able to, to move and fluctuate those speeds and to be able to respond and, and save strokes when you can save strokes. And that's what you need to do in these kind of races. Uh, not in the 800, really. In the 800, you're just going door to door as hard as you can, but in uh, some other races, 1,500, 5,000, but um, tactically speaking, you're going to have to fluctuate those speeds and be able to be comfortable. So he's going in two, one, and going 15 seconds hard. Nice job, nice job. Good, three, two, one, back in for 30 seconds. Back at 80, just a touch faster than what he was holding for that 45 second block. And, and cruising back in there, cruising back in there. Good, 15 seconds, he's going 15 seconds. And, uh, and I will, I'm gonna qualify what I just said too about the 800 here in a second, but we're going in uh, five seconds, last little surge here for 15. And he's going, there it is, nice attack. Trying to hold off. Competitor to his side, maybe it's Marcel, or maybe it's Q-Day Kim, we don't know. Nice, good effort, Daniel, very nice, very nice. Two minute block. Um, let, me, let me clarify with that 800, even in, I will say even in a four and an eight, you, because you're, uh, you know, there's not a lot of tactics. You just you basically are going door to door. But within that, you're attacking different sections of the track um, and knowing where the wind is, how you're attacking the entering the turn, exiting the turn, and moderating um, the, the, the intensity. The intensity is always high, but maybe there's some fluctuations in how you, how you apply your force. Okay, what's another question, Matt? Do I, approve, do I like groove or flag gloves? Well, that's going to be a long conversation. So we got a minute. We got over a minute. Um, so I'm going to give you like the really short, the peak of the iceberg on that, because I, I could talk for quite a bit on that one. But, but I do, I prefer a groove glove, such as Daniel's using, or a lot of the other, uh, Aaron and Brian were both using that. So. Uh, I do prefer a groove glove or a flat glove. And that's, that's my simple answer. Um, maybe in the cool down, I can give you a, long, a longer answer on why that is. Um, I don't want to launch into it 30 seconds because I'll lose track of time. But grab a drink of water. We got one more and then we're well over halfway getting these done. And um, Daniel's looking strong. He's looking good. We got 20 seconds. We had a real nice workout this morning. We did a 16 mile uh, loop and we did seven miles at uh, a hard race pace with the tailwind. So we take the, the headwind sections at a very moderate pace, kind of keep everybody together so we can block the wind. And then you get to the tailwind, you unleash it. Okay, this is standing. When you're ready, go. 15 seconds hard. Very good. Nice. Very good, Daniel. 10 seconds. Five. Three and two, one and rest. Very good. All right, easing back into that 75% range. Um, very good. So we, we like when when in, uh, where we're at in uh, East Central Illinois. There's there's not much topography. It's very flat, um, which allows the winds to, to move through. And today we had a pretty brisk west wind. So we were able to utilize that and as a high speed environment and we position the athletes in such ways that they can, they can really leverage that and work on those high skill, high speed movements. All right, we're going to five seconds back into that 15 second block. Ready, go. Good attack, good attack. You really wanna jump on this. Good, 
good, good, good. Here we go, five seconds. Three, two, one. All right, good, back into 80. Very nice, very nice. So if you notice those with, with Daniel, when he's moving into those jumps, those first few strokes are really aggressive. So he's trying to get a nice jump, get that chair accelerated and moving. And, um, and that's, that's a real uh, asset. If you have that card in your, in your, in your hand, um, well, you're, you're sitting pretty well in, in, in on the track and racing. Last 15 seconds, go. Popping that, really, really digging into that ring. Going five seconds, three, two, one, rest. Not yet, I, I cut you short. That's good, very nice. All right, two minutes on that. Two minutes on that. Um, so let me, let me finish real, real quick on, here's the short on why I like a groove glove versus a flag glove. I think a groove glove creates efficiencies in, in how you interface the hand with the hand ring and, and, and how you apply force, especially in the late hours between six and eight o'clock that you just don't get with flag glove. I think you, you transmit um, energy a little more effectively with a groove glove than you do with the flag glove. I think the flag glove tends to, to allow you to pull up on the ring and, and utilize your lats um, during a release. And we don't, want to use, we, don't, we don't want that to be the case. We talked about proximal to distal movement on Monday. And I think a, a groove glove better allows the athletes to uh, uh, engage in, in, in that, that idea and that, that uh, transfer of energy. Okay. What do we got left? One minute, and then we're doing a roll, right? This is number, now we're going back standing, right? This is number four, I think. Is that right? I lost track of time. I think it is. All right, so one, no, this one's rolling. rolling this yeah. is rolling, yeah. Yeah, this is rolling. All right, Three. what's the next question? I'll think about it while Daniel's going. Uh, what do you recommend between these drills? Active recovery Okay, good question. Yeah, all right. 15 seconds. This one's going to be rolling. So the question is, what do I recommend between each of these hard efforts, active recovery or, or full recovery? And I'll tell you in just a second. All right, ready, Daniel, in five seconds. And everybody at home, going to three and two and one, go. Nice. 15 solid seconds here. Good job, 15. All right, back to 75. That's good. So on, on each of these efforts level, Daniel's really drawing himself inward and, and thinking about where his hand is relative to the hand ring and, and uh, just figuring out how it is. He's, these small, subtle nuances in the way he's manipulating his hand and applying force then translate into incremental gains in, in speed and velocity. And it's really, I, I can tell you as a coach, it's really hard to teach those, those nuances. Um, and we're going in five seconds here, back up and jumping again. Three, two, one, go. You're jumping, 15. Uh, good, five done, five seconds done. We got five seconds left. Nice, nice. Three, two, one, back to 80. Back to 80. Anyways, my point is, even, even doing some, a video analysis, it's really, hard to it's really hard to teach those nuances and the feel of the hand ring. My coach, Marty Morse, always talked about the feel of the hand ring, and, and it's just something you have to pick up on, and you do that by aggregating quality volume at, at, in, in those, those high, high range velocities. Um, coming up on the last 15 seconds. And ready, last jump here, last jump. 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one, and rest. Nice, we just got one more left, one more. Last one we're going to do is going to be rolling again. We're now going to do a standing on number five. 
Um, but um, I remember the question. I, I think I was talking about those just code, feel the hand ring, which you just you put yourself in in that environment so that you can pick up on these subtle little little changes and manipulations. So. Um, between this type of workout, I would I encourage or recommend active recovery, just to continue to, to keep those arms moving. Um, we have other sessions in which we, we do do a, a full a passive recovery, and we'll take some extended uh, uh, extended recovery um, interval blocks. Um, I'm trying to think of a let's see, just about a minute, and then we got our last one. We'll do, so when we're, especially when we're prepping and doing very specific race modeling work and I'm getting these athletes tuned in for world champs or Paralympic games, we'll take long recoveries, a full passive recovery. And, and notably we do that to prep the athlete for the, the, um, the, the environment they're gonna face when they get to the games where you, you warm up and then you sit for 30 minutes to 45 minutes and then you go out on the competition track and you may get one lap and that's it. And then you've got to be ready to go and respond. And so we will, we train that and, and the athletes hate it. And, and because you just, you don't do much, you're just sitting around for the most part. And then you've got to be ready to respond and react. Um, but if you don't train that and you don't prepare for that, it's really difficult then. All right. Okay, here we go. We're going in five seconds. This is the last one. We're going to do the rolling and really try to get this is the last one. So really tune in. There we go. 15 seconds. Nice. Very good. Nice job. Man. Keep it up. We got 10 seconds. Done. Five seconds. Four and rest back into 75. So this is a good uh, opportunity. So Daniel missed two strokes on, on that acceleration and that's okay. He did an incredible job of responding. So he pushed through, he, he had a slight inefficiency in his, his, his stroke, but he pushed right through it, right? So he didn't let that left arm miss affect his right arm path. And he moved back in, found that symmetry and immediately got back in for a quality stroke. And that's what you need to do. Um, often, oftentimes if an athlete will miss a stroke, they'll pull back and retreat and the next few strokes will be less effective. Daniel does a very good job of, of absorbing that, that inefficiency and immediately attacking the ring. Here we go, 15 seconds. Nice. That's great. Hey, okay, we got five seconds left on this one. Good job. Three, two, one, good, back into 80, 30 seconds here. Um, and that's what, and his, oh, his glove rubber's coming off. And that is a, that is an issue, yeah. We'll talk about that in a second here, 15 seconds. All right, we're moving in. This is the last attack here. This is the last attack. In five seconds, gonna make that last jump. You gotta hold the wheel off, hold it off, hold it off. Here we go, here we go. All right, 10 seconds. Nice work, Daniel, nice work, nice work. Five seconds, we're going three, we're going two and one, and that's it, very nice. All right, we got a nice two minute easy jog and then we'll, we'll target our last little block. Hey, this is gonna work out perfect time-wise, I think. Um, yeah, so Daniel said the glove rubber is coming off a little bit. And so um, you can see any, any slight uh, uh, inconsistency in the, the, the contact surface, either the glove or the coating on the hand ring uh, becomes an issue. And especially so the faster you go, the faster you go, the more those, the, those, those deficiencies and those, those changes um, uh, become magnified, become magnified. And the more you're fatigued, not that he is, but the more you're fatigued, then the more those, those disturbances become magnified. That's why it's, it is, it's important to, um, uh, especially on race day, to have all of, all of those things tight and clean. And Daniel is probably one of the best athletes I've seen in terms of having 
uh, all of his equipment, attended to every fine, de every uh, even the fine details. Um, I will say Daniel never loses a race because his equipment is not tuned up and ready to go. Okay, in 30 seconds, and then we'll get to some other questions. We have our last little block, and it's going to be quick. We're going to do a 10-second acceleration, 20 seconds off. We're just doing that four times. So now we're going to we're just moving into this idea of speed reserve. So just being able to try to hit as high percentage of your your pulse warm up max speed as you can, just in 10 seconds. So you got to be quick. You got to be quick. Uh, these are all rolling, Daniel. Yep, all rolling. Yep. So we're going in five seconds, and I'll I'll uh, keep track of your time because it gets hard at this point in the workout. Three, two, one, go. Just 10 seconds. So you try to get in as many strokes as you can as 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 hard as you can. Five seconds. Here we go. Look at good. Three, two, one. Back off. You're just going to let that chair roll out. If you need to put in a couple easy strokes, that's okay too. Um, see how Daniel's getting into a nice tuck. Then 10 seconds, so he's going to get back on the ring. Five seconds. Very good. Very good. Then we're going to get into our second 10 second effort. Ready? Go. You're going to hit that jump as hard as you can. Nice surge attack. Very good. Five seconds. And three, two, one, and good. Into that coast. So whether consciously or unconsciously, Daniel's doing a really good job of taking every opportunity he can to work on different elements. He's always working on getting his elbows nice and tight in, which he would use on the road. Five seconds. We're going for our third one. Three, and two, one, go. 15 seconds. Jump. Not a boy. Driving that ring, manipulating that hand ring, finding that speed wherever you can find it. One more. All right, there it is, 20 seconds. Yep, so even though he's on the roller, as I said, he's getting into a nice aero position, tucking, keeping those elbow ends tight. That way it becomes unconscious on the road, too, when you're competing. Should just become natural. Five seconds. And then last one, last 10 seconds. Then we're going to our cool down. And we're going, last one, this is it, this is it for all the marbles. Three, two, one, all right, that's it, good. All right, we're going to do just a nice little cool down here, and then we'll, we'll pull that block off. We got it, you got any more questions for me? Yeah, a couple. We got a bunch, okay, I can answer them later too. Yes, yeah, so this one is a, a smart roller, if you will. So it does have a Bluetooth connection between the, the, the uh, mode generator, which is just a, a, a series of magnets, and the iPad. Yep, so it communicates, tells us all of Daniel's performance data, other than cadence. We don't have cadence. Um, it's just it's a Wahoo kicker. It's, it's the, the technology's Wahoo, and, and we just I, I just ripped it apart, and then I re- we uh, uh, retrofitted it onto a, a, a roller. Um, these are the Rev Sports rollers out of Canada, Alex DuPont's rollers, um, and we, that's the ones that we use. We have 10 of those, and all 10 have a Wahoo kicker attached. Okay. One last question. One last question, good. How do you structure the week's workouts? How do I structure the week's workouts? What type of workouts? What type of workouts? Um, well, I'm going to do my best to answer that quick. we got a couple minutes, Daniel. So, uh, boy, you know, it depends on the time of year the, 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 and, and what the intent is of, of that particular training week. Um, but here's, here's the rule of thumb that I use. I'm going to train speed on Monday. Tuesday, I'm going to move into some, some harder blocks. So Monday would be higher effort level, the athlete probably doesn't feel like they worked as hard, but we're doing a little, a really a high skill workout. Day two, we're going to probably work in the anaerobic capacity. So these are harder two minute blocks, maybe three minutes blocks. Wednesday, we're going to move into maybe some extended endurance. Thursday may be an active recovery, easy day. Friday, we move either we'll do speed or power session. And then Saturday typically is a race modeling day. So we're going to, we're going to combine and kind of cobble in a bunch of different elements. Um, and then usually Saturday is a little longer. Doesn't always have to be the case, but that's that's kind of the, the intent. Usually, so you want to train. You want to train speed first, 
then you can work you can move into work capacity training um, is what is how I refer to it and then um, and then you move into some longer endurance which is the idea you want to train the central nervous system when it's fresh um, and that's that's just general general guideline okay how are we doing on time you have more questions okay well I think that's it right almost 10 45 all right, well, you can ease off, Daniel. Great workout, everybody, today. And we'll take 15 minutes, and then whoever's tuning in for our next block, which hopefully you all will, because we have uh, Daniel and his, his teammates, uh, Paralympic athlete teammates, and we're going to do a nice little round table. Just ask them and have them talk a little bit about uh, some of their experiences, thoughts, and ideas. So thanks for joining us, and we'll hope to see you in about 15 minutes.